welcome to Road Odyssey. Thanks a ton for joining me in this part two of the 1970 Corvette restoration. Please like and subscribe. Remember, I have my Facebook page where you can follow my current activities. I had shown in my prior video part one of how the vet went from original to a body frame off restoration. Part one went through February 1st with it not running and being trailered in until February 28th. Then March 5th when the body was shipped for body and paint work. On March 5th, the body arrived at Tub Restorations for body and paint work. This is Cecil Tubb and his Facebook page. On March 20th, I took my C8 Z06 Corvette and a C7 Z06 friend from Paris, Texas to see the 70 vet for fun. Um, bad areas at the moment, we're on the front right corner, front right wheel arch, material buildup around the side mirrors, right rear corner, uh, below the rear right tail lights, the rear left corner, and the front left wheel arch. An initial look at the interior after being stripped didn't really show anything bad. Here's a quick walk around. And Cecil was doing a little door teardown. Come March 21st, Darren Cheney a through and through Corvette guy and hot rod shop owner came to help advise Cecil on the finer details of how to do good fiberglass work. Even Darren's father, whom had done work on vets since many moons ago, joined in to help. Darren coached on proper sanding. Because then we're going to take, and you know, we're going to work it, you know how you yeah. do, work mm -hmm. a spot this big, yeah. and we're going to blend all that in. We don't want to yeah. take any more of that out because we got to have it. Yeah. And we ain't even too worried about that little deal. Yeah. Let me look at that. It kind of looks like a bubble. Yeah. Yeah. I think it will. We'll dig that bubble on out. Okay. And make sure that it ain't no deeper than it looks, and I don't think it is. Okay. And then, and then when we fill that with the bondo or the or the uh, finishing putty, uh -huh. uh -huh. the icing, okay. we will uh, go from there. Okay. Then, Darren talked about how to do good body fill in fiberglass. This is a true art form, at least to me. You have to take your time and get acquainted with the finesse of how to apply materials. And here's a quick look at the first pass. While Cecil sanded and added body fill in some spots, Darren and his dad began work on the bad rear right section in the tail lights area.
I did a partial walk around of some of the work done to this point. Cecil was blocking all of the body fill areas that were just previously done. Cecil was very happy to have gotten such great help from Darren Cheney and his father. It was very nice of them. I'm sure the new owner will appreciate it as well. April came and Cecil had prepared the possible red colors for the vet, each with different base colors. Uh, the customer chose a darker red with the black base. Fire red pearl, I believe, is the color. A quick look at the car with a little more body work completed. By May 8th, body work was done and it was rolled into the paint booth. Everything was looking good. Oh. Uh, the antenna hole was filled, by the way. And you need to look at something that was totally overlooked. Something that seasoned Corvette builders know about. The bird cage can easily be damaged. Some of this you may not see. So you have to be very careful to inspect a C3 closely, especially for T-tops and convertibles. And you have to look in the wells where the body bolts onto the frame. I will show you more of this a little later in this video when it gets repaired. All of the other exterior parts seem to be in good condition. Time to prepare for painting. One thing that Cecil does is wipe down the body and parts with a paint prep wipe or auto prep pre-treatment wipe to remove contaminants. Typically a lint-free nanofiber cloth designed to loosen and trap contaminants with a degreaser solvent. He proceeds to apply a layer of primer again because of the bodywork previously done. Let me sidetrack you for a second. On May 17th, I got more clips of the original frame chassis. While you might think, hey, that would be salvaged and reused. Uh, no, not for a rebuilt engine, new body and paint job, refreshed interior, etc. This is where a customer has to understand or consider that in order to protect an investment, you sometimes need to upgrade instead of rehabbing the original parts. Yes, the original is possibly something to rehab if you have all original parts, etc., but just not cost effective or timely in getting the build done and is easily applicable to gaining better safety like in suspension and brake systems. After considering several vendors, Callaway Customs and the owner decided on Street Shop for this build. Check out the Street Shop website. Here's a pic of the frame chassis being built. Let me tell you, this thing comes with all the trimmings. Too much to read here and now. I plan on in maybe the next video to tell you more about this. Suffice it to say, it's very nice and upgrades the car to a 2013 through 2019 standards of like a C7 Corvette level in many ways. 
on the glorious morning of May 31st, I got myself to Callaway Customs. Join the guys for a trip to Tub Restorations. Um, why? Well, to let Jason get crazy with a welder, of course. Yep, you're right. Something changed. The front clip was removed. The birdcage was in horrible shape, rusted like a piss bucket in the mud. So, Cecil investigated, well, Google searched, how to remove the front clip. Watching people like this fella, Bocephus, demonstrated how to carefully heat the glue joints and basically chisel uh, using painters, multi-tools, and... I don't know, flathead screwdrivers, whatever, to pry off that front clip. Yeah, not for the faint of heart, but Cecil accomplished this. Removing the front clip allows you to access the whole front of the birdcage to repair for that front window frame. Looking at the exterior of the front clip, it does look like there had been a few fractures that Cecil had to repair afterwards. Otherwise, it looks like a job well done. These are a few pics of where the front clip was glued on. Uh, the most difficult portion is right across the top under that cowl. Uh, just be really careful there. Here is Cecil and Jason looking at the rear birdcage damage. This is where the frame connects to the body behind the seats and door jam. This area is visible through the wheel well and should be inspected, theoretically, prior to purchasing a C3. The driver left side is in okay condition. These are the three repair kit plates for this vital connection. Jason will be welding them into place. Jason prepares and prefits the plates, which takes a few patient moments for sure. When these plates are welded in, they must be very well done, of course, and have a bottle of water available for fire or fiberglass burn damage protection. Repairing the whole window frame was done using what I will refer to as a kit from Mid-American Motor Works. Here's their website. For C3s, there are many things to look at. And here is the group of parts for the complete front window frame, all of which had to be carefully removed off this Corvette and replaced without any misalignment. Cecil and Jason prepared the surfaces of the main body. The bottom front of the window area definitely had to be cleaned up first. Here is the original bottom metal section already cut out. Scott and Cecil placed in the bottom plate along with the corner sections and other pieces for fitment and placement testing. Lots of clamps were utilized. And be certain the clamps are really needed, especially if you do this yourself. A quick test of the replacement window is necessary for assurance of the new parts placement. What you do not see is the numerous measurements noted for checking the placement of the parts as they were installed. Removing the upper T-top support from the front window frame was very much a chore. Be prepared to have the tools and patience to do this portion of the job. You can hack at it, but you got to be careful. It requires finesse and paying attention to not destroy that T-top support front section. Be sure to also insert a well-placed support for that T-top uh, member uh, itself. Once the frame gets cut away, you do not want that thing hanging. 
Now the top of the window frame is clamped in and checked with measurements, then tacked. Then both sides are clamped in, measured, and tacked as well. Again, a subsequent replacement window fitment is done for assurance of accuracy, knowing that it is still a good generalized fitment. Jason puts in final tack welds. They then do a test with the T-tops themselves as further fitment testing, and they were just fine. More final tack welds and another replacement window test. Here's a view of the finished parts installed. Looks really good. This might be the best option for fixing this window frame, especially if you have people to help and plenty of good tools for the job. Oh, and patience. But it's not done yet. There are still two corner pieces on the inside. And so the month of May comes to an end. I returned to tub restorations on June 17th. They had sprayed black high temp paint along the firewall, along the front window frame, in the wheel wells, and all inside the front clip. It's time to do the first reinstall of the doors. Best as a two-person job despite having a door jack. One thing that also helped was that Cecil could still see a faint outline of where the door hinges were originally. Here they are setting the second door. Cecil gets it bolted on nicely first try. Here's a little view from the inside. Cecil wanted to check the door glass and fit test it with the newly installed front window frame. With the glass in, it is looking good. Cecil then got some of the exterior stripping to do further verification that it was all well. On top of that, he placed on a T-top, no pun intended, to do more checking. Seemed good to me, and Cecil was happy with it as well. Further down the road in the next video, uh, much more happened in June, July. The engine build was completed. The Callaway brothers helped reinstall the front clip to the vet. Cecil lays down layers of paint and man, does that red end up popping and flopping like crazy. I also got a good look at the new frame and chassis after it arrived at the Callaway shop. Well, this has been March, April, and May, and half of June. Much more of the 1970 Corvette restoration still to come in the Part 3 video. Please be looking for it. Monitor my Facebook page, Road Odyssey, 
for these videos and others. Uh, I'm working on tons of videos, so just be looking for them. Thanks a ton for watching this long video. I do really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. And with that, relax, take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye.